They're fun. They're familiar. But can these figures be big business? For Funko, October was a month to forget. But for investors, is this stock a collectible? A few weeks ago, I told you about a rapidly growing little toy maker called Funko that I got in a call about. Funko makes lots of licensed collectibles and figurines related to movies and TV shows and sports and musicians. The numbers look good, and the stock had pulled back so dramatically from its highs that I gave you my blessing to buy for speculation. For the next couple of weeks, the stock surged higher. But then last night, Funko reported, and well, let's just say the market's reaction has been very fun. Stock plunged uh, more than four bucks, or 21%. But here's the crazy thing. The quarter wasn't that bad. Funko delivered better than expected sales and earnings. They raised their full-year forecast substantially for both the top and the bottom line. So what the heck is going on here? Well, Funko's gross margins declined. People seem to be worried about that. But this seems like an extreme move off of this news. To me, well, let's just say it looks like a good quarter with some hair on it. Not perfect, but not the kind of thing that should erase 20% of your stock's value in the blink of an eye. you got to figure this out. So let's take a closer look with Brian Mariotti. He's the CEO of Funko. Get a better sense of the quarter, how his company's doing as we head into the holidays. Mr. Mariotti, welcome to Mad Money. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jim. Excited to be on the show. All right, well, Brian, I got to tell you, I, I, I think, first of all, before we get into the actual the quarter, just explain to people what you do, because people have probably seen your stuff, didn't know it was you. Well, you know what? We're an index fund of pop culture. We connect fans to the things they love. And... There's so much things out there that are amazing, sports, music, television, movies, video games. Uh, We are like a fast fashion company for pop culture. We hold more licenses than any company on the planet. We connect those amazing different products to their fan bases. We do it on a global basis, and you know what? We love what we do. Now, for instance, uh, people may not understand. uh, They think of maybe it could only be Hasbro but you or Mattel, but you have a lot of, say, Disney licenses. You also have Evergreen properties. Yeah, look, we are, we're disruptive. We're a very different business model in the traditional toy space. Uh, the idea that we can be the first out to market with things that are resonating, use evergreen content with Disney and Marvel and Star Wars along great things like Bob Ross and Golden Girls and Overwatch and Fortnite and sports teams. It's a very, very different business model. Uh, we leveraged, I think it was close to 550 unique properties alone in Q3. That's a recipe for success, that kind of diversity. Well, yeah, I think it would be 551. I happened to catch maybe your most bestseller for, uh, for the holiday seasons. And this is uh, a uh, pop mad money C. And there I think, I don't know if you see this, this ideal. Now, here's what I don't understand. I, How can you do these so fast? I mean, here's actually a me. And I am sure that you can do many of these. The speed would seem to be breathtaking how fast you can do these. Well, you know, I mean, that probably is the biggest seller that, that Jim Cramer or Mad Money pop. This, this uh, forget about Fortnite and big, big titles. It's probably you that's going to be, you know, being the one on the, uh, on the forefront of everybody's mind for, uh, for Christmas. But you know what? We have an amazing team of passionate pop culture junkies at our company, love working on what they do. They, they, they put their heart and soul into uh, every one of their designs, and that's why we move so fast. Well, we just have a passionate, uh, energetic company. Okay, now I know in the conference call, some people were talk, talking about, what are you doing? I uh, make, obviously, a lot of stuff in China. Half of it's made outside of China. You're talking about moving a substantial part of your manufacturing out of China, being more uh, agnostic about where you make things. Yeah, I think we just realized that there's opportunities there um, outside of China to produce, and we're not really concerned about the tariffs, and that's not really our primary decision-making on why we're moving it out there. We're looking for the best factories to move the fastest, the highest quality, the best price, the most consistent production. Uh, It just happens to be a lot of that is working outside of uh, China, and we figure by the end of next year, we should be about 70% of our manufacturing should reside outside of China. Now, it did seem that I guess people were upset with the uh, gross margins, but you made some very good points at the fourth quarter. You're going to have a really good relationship with Walmart, a lot of good things ahead. You have the movie schedule for Disney next year. So maybe this is just a speed bump. We actually were kind of mystified by why the stock got hurt so badly, frankly. Yeah, 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 we don't really worry about that. Look, we love what we do. We put our head down. We know we have a business model that works. It's been proven on a global basis. We keep working our tail off, work, put our head down, and, and not really be concerned about watching the stock. The last thing you need to do is be focused on what Wall Street thinks. It's our job to, to, to meet and beat expectations on a quarter-by-quarter basis, also to get out there and to educate people what our company does. We're a relatively new company. We think we're doing a phenomenal job of doing that, and we're going to continue to do that, continue to educate Wall Street on why 
Pop culture is a business they should be in because our retailers all around the world believe they should be in that business. Right. And the other thing is, is just get people excited about what our business is and how disruptive it is. We're doing a better job of educating Wall Street. Okay, so, Brian, what's the smallest lot that you do? Yeah, you know, uh, smallest quantity? Yeah. Yeah, I think, look, we're not really concerned about spreadsheet analysis when it comes to making things that we know are on the, fo on the forefront of pop culture. Great examples are Golden Girls and Bob Ross. These are just things that, that brought people back to things they loved in, in their childhood or in their, their teens or in college years. And then in the, ultimately putting them in a, in a format that excites people and delights our end consumers. And what happens is they blow up. You know, you do something where you think you're making five or 10,000 Bob Ross. Next thing you know, you're selling 500,000 Bob Ross pop. That's oh, wow. kind of the recipe for success. Lead with the heart, know what pop culture is about, and then kick butt. And uh, how about the holiday season? Seems strong to you? Cost, uh, consumers buying? Yeah, we're, we're really excited. We're in a great position inventory-wise with our retail partners, sell-through-wise with our retail partners, better year over year than we were last year. The appetite for our product is amazing on a global basis. We're in great position for Q4, and we love what 2019 looks like. How about Fortnite? What are you doing? Uh, well, we're the first one to grab a license. We're the first one to have the product in the marketplace in our category, so we think we have a competitive advantage there. Uh, early sales throughs seem very, very positive. I think, it's, uh, I, I think this is going to be a great property for us. All right, the only reason I asked you about the lot was totally self-centered. We're about to have our 3,000th show. And I wanted to get everybody a, a Jim Cramer doll, but maybe there's... I think we could probably make something like that happen. All right. Thank you. I like your company very much, Brian. That's Brian Mariotti. He's the CEO of Funko. Thank you so much, sir. Great to see you. Thanks for having us on. Hey, hey it's kind of cool. Come on, admit it. Stay with Cramer. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.